So we're happy that this, uh, this happened. Fat Ali showed up, and we're going to enjoy our, our speech with him now. So let me just give a little introduction. Uh, Fat Ali's from Singapore. He's got 11 years' experience in, uh, in his field. Started off as a penetration tester, now as an intelligence and analyst. And the title of his talk is Advanced Social Engineering Techniques and the Rise of Cyber Scams Industrial Complex. So join me in welcoming Fat Ali. Hello, everyone. Um, I always get nervous whenever I speak on the big stage, so uh, please bear with me for a while. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about advanced social engineering and the rise of the cyber scam industrial complex. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm from Singapore. Um, how many of you have been there? I know some of you have been there. How many of you have been like, uh, know how big or small Singapore is? Right. So, so for those of you who don't know, um, so let's say this is, this is Singapore, right? It's like, okay, so this is Singapore. So you want to know how big uh, Singapore is compared to America? So let's try to zoom out, 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 and zoom out, and there you go. So that's United States, and you can't see Singapore at all. So it's an island. <laughs> um, so. Uh, that's the reason why we call ourselves a tiny red dot. Um, and despite uh, this tiny red dot, uh, we have a lot of um, uh, cyber attacks and cyber crimes happening in Singapore, uh, probably because the average person uh, owns at least three mobile phones and two laptops. So even I myself have about two phones. Um, so, so that's the reason why we are always a target from a lot of cyber crime, cyber actors, uh, threats and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you some of the things about uh, Singapore and, and why uh, scammers just love to attack people in Singapore or target Singapore. Uh, I'm currently working for a UK risk company, uh, my office in Singapore, uh, and I'm working as a cyber threat intelligence analyst. Uh, well, basically what I do is um, I analyze uh, the geopolitical situation of a country or of a region. So let's say um, Philippines and China are having some territorial issues, right? So what we do as an analyst is we try to, uh, we try to see and, and try to analyze what happens uh, when there's a political tension, uh, what happens in cyber domain, what happens in the cyberspace. Will there be uh, nation state attacks against one another in cyberspace? So, for example, a uh, few days ago, uh, if you have read uh, the 1937 CN China team um, attack at the Vietnam airports, right? Uh, so, so in, in cyberspace, uh, there's already a cyber conflict going on uh, between Vietnamese and Philippines uh, going against China and China against them. So, so these are the things that we do and analyze. However, my talk has nothing to do with all this. Uh, in my previous career, I've been a pen tester. I've done uh, security operations, uh, analysts, and, and engineering. So 11 years so far, so good. And I was actually in Vegas two years ago speaking about SCADA. Um, and I, was, I spoke to a number of conferences. Uh, the big ones are just on the list. And yeah, it's nice to be back. Um, so before I begin, I just want to share with you something. Um, you know, this was two years ago. I, you know, I'd never been to America before. Um, so Vegas was my first uh, state, I don't know, state um, in, in, in America that I visited. So, you know, I don't get to see these kind of things, like people wearing, uh, I don't know, walking dead, uh, bikini top girls in Singapore, uh, in the streets, right? So it amazed me, like, wow, this is like interesting thing about America, you know, so I should get a picture with them. I didn't know that I should actually pay them. So... <laughs> So it, it kind of like uh, like the moment when they say, oh, uh, you know, you need to give me some tip. I'm like, really? Oh, shit. I don't know. Um, you know, when you go to Universal Studios, you don't actually pay them when you actually take pictures of Frankenstein or Winnie the Pooh. But here you have to pay. So it was like a cultural difference for me. So, yeah, I had fun. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so in this th these three pictures, right, uh, I want you to guess how much do I actually pay them to take a picture? So let's say the one with the, the two ladies. How much do you think I actually paid for them to take the picture with them? Five bucks? Good guess. 
Uh, the Walking Dead. Three bucks? Three bucks? Four bucks? It's, it's okay. Um, the Star Wars. How much? Ten? Two? Thirty? Now, now here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, so what happened was, when I was on top of the the, the bridge um, at the, between the Cosmopolitan uh, bridge and, and the Walgreens down down, down below, um, I wanted to take a picture with them. So I thought, like you know, uh, I came out to them and say, "Here, here's five bucks. Uh, let me take a picture with them." And they say, "Oh no, don't worry about it. Um, we we'll get we got you covered. Let's take. A, uh, we ask for the money. Uh, you can give us the money after you take the picture." So you know, I didn't know what was happening. I like you know, I trust America, so um, pretty much believe what they say. <laughs> and uh, after taking the picture, they told me like, um, okay, we usually do 25 bucks, uh, but if you want, you can just give us 15. So I was like, oh shit, this is a lot of money, you know. Um, I didn't expect that, but at that situation, I didn't want to spoil my mood, um, and I wasn't around with people that know me, and pretty much I do not want to like cause any conflicts. So I paid them 15 bucks. And here's the thing, he said, oh, it's not just me. How about that Starship Trooper over there? So I have to pay another 15 bucks with, to, the, to, to that guy. <laughs> so I have to pay like 30 bucks. So th that was two years ago. So uh, this time, I didn't take any pictures with them at all. <laughs> and they're still around though. So, uh, so it was like, when I saw them, I was like, shit, this, these are the two buggers that actually take my 30 bucks for. <laughs> um, well, w can I say that I was being scammed at that time? Pretty much, right? So. Uh, that's my experience in Vegas so far. So, so far, so good. Uh, and um, I love to travel. So I've been to a lot of countries for the past five years, over 20 countries. Um, and, and so in this picture, I just concentrate on the Southeast Asia. Uh, so all these places that I visited, I have been faced with quite a number of scamming experience. So let's say uh, in Hanoi, which is in Vietnam, uh, it, uh, the tuk-tuk scam. So it, it, if you do not know what's tuk-tuk, so tuk-tuk is like a, you know those famous uh, in Thailand where they actually have a small taxi, you know, those kind of vans, so, so that's the tuk-tuk. So when I took the tuk-tuk, um, they, again, they say that, you know, don't worry about the payment, uh, we'll do it later. So after taking about 15 minutes to the streets of uh, Hanoi, uh, when I told them, like, look, I, I wanted to pay like 15 bucks, uh, he said that, no, you need to pay 25 US dollars. So I was like, wow, I mean, even in Vietnam, they actually recognize US dollars, you know? So 25 bucks, I, I know I was scammed. So when I went online, they said that, yeah, this is one of the problems. You, you should actually settle for like seven to 10 bucks, that's the max. Anything more than that, you've probably been scammed. Um, in Manila, in Philippines, uh, uh, when I reached Manila, I wanted to go to a, an airport hotel. So I didn't know where it is. It was my first time in the Philippines. So the moment I hopped inside the taxi, uh, Halfway through the journey, the taxi suddenly shut off the meter. And he said, um, the sh meter suddenly shut, uh, shut off. You need to pay about these pesos. And I was like, what happened? You know? And he said, oh, it's just shut down. So at that, at that point of time, you, know, you are in a different country. And, and it's very hard to actually quarrel with these kind of people because you won't know that the next place that they actually send you, if you, call, if you, like, you know, score them out or what, They'll probably go to a dark alley and probably get raped or something. I don't know. So, so uh, the best thing is I just pay the, the guy uh, how, much, how much they actually wanted. Uh, Thailand, Bangkok uh, is interesting. So that's the bus camp. So uh, when, when me and my friends, uh, my colleagues actually, we went to uh, uh, a place uh, in, in Thailand, uh, Bangkok, we actually went to a bar. So this person says, okay, you need to pay 10 baht for just the drinks. You don't have to actually enjoy the show or pay for the show. So 10 baht is quite cheap. But when we went up to, it was quite a sleazy area. What, what do you expect? It's Bangkok, right? So, <laughs> so when we went up to the, to the, to the second story, uh, second level, uh, we were introduced with you know, a couple of girls. We weren't interested in it. We just want to have some drinks. Um, and you know, it was just 10 baht. But after 15 minutes, we were quite uncomfortable. So, so what happened was when we wanted to leave, we, so four of us just took out 40 baht and they said, that, no, uh, 40 baht is just the drink. This entertainment, you need to pay 400 baht each. And I was like, oh God. But luckily for me, my boss at that time, my director, sorry, my manager was, uh, 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 he's, a, he's a Thai, he's an American Thai. So he knew how to speak Thai. So the moment he came in and said, 
what was the what was happening you know then i tell look um, uh, this guy is asking us to pay 400 baht each and we can only for like 10 baht you know and i said oh, no 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 then he spoke Thai, and that guy was you know the visit he he was he's like the moment my manager spoke in thai he just crushed the visit and say just pay 10 baht each so just imagine how scary it was at that time you know and there were like a couple of bouncers around us uh, asking us to pay or forcing us to pay actually uh, in Malaysia, uh, uh, this, is, this was actually my very first, uh, when I was visiting Malaysia, my very first camping experience. So, um, so I, I, I went to Johor, you know, part of Malaysia, to actually buy a ticket to Kuala Lumpur. So the, the, the ticket price was about 25 ringgit, very cheap, uh, and, and the journey was about five hours. So my destination, I wanted to go to a place called Sevamban, um, which is about two hours away from Kuala Lumpur. But, uh, so the ticket actually shows as Sevamban. Uh, but when I actually went up to the bus, and after, you know, after five hours, um, they told, uh, I was like, hey, this, I feel like this is further than, than the place that we are supposed to go. So I asked the bus driver and said, I'm supposed to go to this place called Sevamban. Uh, I think you are heading to a highway to Kuala Lumpur. And I said, oh, you want to go to Sevamban? Stop at the next toll. So I was actually forced to, to board down uh, uh, at a toll in the highway, and I have to walk about two hours just to, just to make a phone call and ask my friend to pick me up. Um, and the funny part is, um, I had to call a taxi. So, so in the taxi, um, uh, he, he told me that, you know, uh, luckily it was uh, during the day. Uh, you, you, if not, you're going to get worse. Uh, so the, the place that where I was at, to the nearest bus station was just about like five, 10 minutes, but he charged me about 50 ringgit, so I was camped again uh, in, there. So it was like a double whammy for me. Uh, in Indonesia, um, when I was visiting a place called Batam, um, uh, I was being stopped by a law enforcer, and he told me to actually go inside their uh, room. So what happened was they asked me to pay him uh, I can't remember, was it about $50, Singapore? Uh, and, and the reason was, now this is a funny reason. The reason was, I went to the country with a shorts and slippers. And that's the reason. And I was only 18 at that time. So I, would, I didn't know anything. That was my first time in, in that place. And I had to pay. And the worst part is, I had to pay for the other uh, dog enforcer that was in that, in, in that office. So there were about three of them. So I lost about $150 just to get my trip back uh, to Singapore. So it, it was a bit, you know, uh, very disappointed, but what to do? So what I've learned basically is, one way or another, we are all victims of social engineering. Um, it depends on how you actually define social engineering. Some can be used in a good way, some can be used in a bad way, and some can be used in a darker way. And it all depends on where you are at at the moment. So it depends on the environment, the situation, your current mood, uh, the, the, how well versed your attacker is, whether they are using authoritative techniques, you know, shout at you using law enforcer kind of uh, rank, and your experience, you know, uh, especially when, you know, when I'm a, a, a virgin traveler and, and going out there and, and didn't know these kind of things that's happening, and that time there were no trip advisor to actually tell us all this. So yeah, it, so the more experience you actually gain, you know that this kind of scams always happen in every country that you actually visited. So, so those are physical scams. So now with the introduction of technology, uh, we, the, the scam has now changed from physical to the cyber domain, all right? And that's why we call it cyber scams. So how we define cyber scams? Um, by definition of social engineering, this is taken from Webopedia, if I'm not mistaken, an attack vector that relies heavily on human interaction and often involves tricking people into breaking normal security procedures. And if we define internet fraud, the use of internet services or software with internet access to defraud scam victims or otherwise to take advantage of them. So basically, cyber scam is a combination of these two. So, back to Singapore. You know, a lot of you who have heard of Singapore, we are like a low crime thing. So, uh, there are still crimes, but it's very low. And we always have these mottos saying that uh, low crime doesn't mean no crime. And if you look at the statistics, right, we are actually very low, and it's always decreasing by the year. But with the introduction of internet, 
our commercial crimes, our online crimes are getting higher. So we actually, um, so in 2014, uh, in 2015, we actually increased by 4%, contributed just by online crimes. And the top 10 scams in Singapore, that's a lot, but I'll be focusing on several things, like the first, the first four things. Internet love scam, China official scam, online purchase scam, and credit for set scam. Um, and um, you're going to see how interesting these scams are, how, how uh, creative they are using the art of deception or art of manipulation to actually uh, steer away your mind and, and try to steal what they can. So if you look at the money lost towards scammers in Singapore alone, in 2014, it's about 8.8 .8 million. In 2015, it increased almost double. And January to April this year, there's already 190 cases and about $7.5 million we already lost to internet love scam. Um, and, so, and so on and so forth, right? It's like increasing. So the, in, this is the interesting part, uh, how the scam works. So I'm gonna show you some of the scams that we face in Singapore and how it works and I'm gonna share with you the findings and analysis. So WeChat, how many of you users WeChat here? Oh, really? Okay, nice. No, one or two percent. So WeChat is an actually application. Uh, it's actually an application uh, from China. Uh, it's like WhatsApp or Kik. Do you? How, how many of you uses Kik? All right. So it's similar like Kik, uh, but this is from the China uh, version. So how the scam work is, you know, like Kik. Uh, random people who knows your ID or just who just randomly type your ID who actually gets to speak to you or talk to you, right? Like random chat, like chat bully or something like that. So you send a, uh, so this particular person, or uh, usually it's a woman, would actually send a seductive picture by mistake or probably targeted. Uh, they will actually communicate with the victim. They will talk you know, in a friendly tone, asking, you know, making friends. Uh, and and the, the best part is they will ask for your number and they will actually call you guys, uh, call, call them up and say, you know, just to verify that the, the end of the call is actually a lady and it's not some fake dude. Um, <laughs> and, and they usually s s uh, share their sad story. Uh, like, you know, they are from uh, China, who, uh, in Singapore studying and they don't have the money to pay rent and they need extra money so they're they are actually willing to actually offer their body. So when they ask for the number and, you know, make an appointment. So what happens next is when the appointment has really been created, uh, the victim will actually wait for her uh, at a certain places, certain place, and um, they will be given a call. See, the, the reason why they ask for the number is because this number will actually be given to the pimp, and this guy will actually call them up, uh, and they will say that, look, you know, you want to meet, you want to meet this girl, she's this age, but in order for you to meet her, you need to pay a certain amount of money. So they were uh, they, they were they were forced to actually pay. Things like you know, like iTunes card or Apple card or something like that, uh, in in a more like for hundred bucks to six hundred fifty bucks, and and the, so they will give a lot of multiple reasons, multiple transaction. So, for an, for instance, they will actually ask you to pay. First is for deposit, we will pay you back. Second time, uh, they will ask you again. We just want to make sure that you are not from the police. So, we put down the deposit of four hundred dollars, and then we will send you the girl. Then the money, the moment you give more and more, they will ask for more and more. And eventually you don't see any girls. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was about to say something else. So yeah, you eventually don't get to see <laughs> girls, uh, the girls there. So, so yeah, sometimes they resort to threats. Um, and and, and if, this is one other example. So pretty girl on WeChat, chat and led me to the library and then against the court, uh, buy about $106. Uh, worth of Alipay credit, and eventually he has to pay another top up of six hundred and twenty-three dollars, and all these people actually paid for it, uh, and eventually they get nothing out of it. So, so that's the sad part uh, about uh, the victims uh, for for this credit for sex scam. So, there's a lot of warnings and awareness being done uh, in Singapore for this. You know, um, like uh, they they put posters, they they put uh, these kind of things just to make sure that people. Uh, know that these are these kind of scams are happening, but sadly, uh, people don't really like like they don't really take heed. They actually just it, it just happens, you know. I, I'm not so sure why they simply fell for these kind of tricks. So it doesn't happen for Asians only. Uh, so uh, it happens in Australia. Uh, I think it also happens to some part of the U.S. 
initially um, and even even in Canada. So so yeah, um, these are the things that you know ha happen against uh, men usually, because you know we tend to think with our dicks rather than our brains. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, that's the sad part. Um, so our findings is most of the time this platform were used uh, in WeChat. Um, targeted gender are always male. Victims are always in the 30s, 50s, uh, and the language used are Chinese. Is Chinese, um, and the mode of transaction are usually Alipay. And uh, between January to April, we have really lost about 422,000, which is about 210,000 USD. Uh, and I think it's going to grow by the end of the year. Um, I'm not so sure why we are falling tricks to this kind of scams. Now, um, internet love scam is very interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure you have heard a lot of internet scam thing like from the Nigerian, Nigerian, uh, uh, from Nigeria especially, right? So what they do is they usually target uh, lonely women, uh, widow, divorced, uh, and they actually, you know, use Facebook as a medium. So they actually make, make friends with you. Um, then after that, they use this catfishing techniques. How many of you knows about these catfishing techniques? Right, only a couple. So basically, what catfishing is is you know we have fishing, we have fishing, we have so many kind of shing, um, but but uh, catfishing is basically a, a technique used to actually uh, um, act as another person. So let's say uh, if I'm on Twitter and I want to catfish somebody, um, and I, uh, what I do is I'll just take a picture from a handsome model. And use it on Twitter and try to like uh, lure girls into you know uh, uh, getting to know me, uh, and, and they believe uh, they, they actually believe. So so that's catfishing basically. You're impost, impost, impostering or imposting. I'm not sorry, imposter. Okay, what? So so after after uh, making friends with them in Facebook, they actually continue the conversation via emails. Uh, they sweet talk with the victims. They make the victim fall in love. You know. And, and, and once they gain the trust and sympathy, that's where they actually take advantage. Um, and eventually, the goal is always money. And if you look, uh, for every, most of the cases here, uh, they actually pay through Western Union. So, so if you look at, okay, this is uh, the Singapore, there's Malaysia, and uh, there's Floridians. Florida, this US, right? Flor Florida, right? So just the love scam itself, uh, actually cost one person to pay up to $1.2 million. So if you think about it, right, um, who needs zero days when you can actually scam someone for $1.2 million, right? So, so a lot of these people, they actually believe in these kind of things. Uh, and one of the reasons is, you know, it, it depends on the, the kind of gender. It depends on the kind of people. So usually men tend to, you know, if, if somebody wants, if, if a girl were to ask a man straight forward and say, Look, um, can I have sex with you tonight? So definitely would say yes, right? And, but if you ask a girl the same question, you probably get a slap, right? But so, so the thing is, for women, they don't actually, you know, um, you, they don't actually try to seduce by saying such a thing. They will actually try to say sweet talk, you know, uh, uh, give some sympathy, telling her how beautiful they are, earn their trust, and eventually, you know, the goal is to siphon money. Um, and if you look at the mode of transaction, it's always Western Union. So if you look at Nigerian scam, uh, why are they actually using MoneyGram or Western Union? It's because um, if you look at the city of Lagos, for example, this is where most of the scammers are. Um, Lagos is basically a, sit, uh, a city where they are still a cash-based society, they, they are still progressing or developing their payment, uh, the digital payment uh, or, or those credit cards kind of thing. So eventually, whatever, they don't have things like PayPal or, or, or Amazon gift cards and stuff like that. So they still prefer cash. And because of that, that's the reason why they actually use Western Union. And if you look at the, the money lost, um, it has like 7.5, which is about USD, $5.5 million, which is like, just this quarter, um, so I'm not. I'm gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see at the end of the year how much we actually lost to uh, internet love scam, cyber extortion scam. Um, so this is where uh, girls will actually prey on the victim. They actually made friends with uh, with people on Facebook, and what they do is 
they will use Skype and say, let's, you know, let's, let's, let's do things together. And without the guy realizing it, they are actually being videotaped, well, recorded. Um, and once they actually show themselves, the person at the uh, at the, the end of the caller will actually quickly screen, uh, screen grab or, or record it and actually post the links to YouTube, and the links will actually be uh, will be shown to them and say that check check out this link. This is you on YouTube, and and they they will say that if you want if you want me to remove this link, this is how much money that you need to pay. So eventually you get black you got blackmail for it, um, and this is always increasing, and majority of the scam. Uh, actually happen um, from the Philippines. So, so, so the perpetrators actually are from Philippines and the target are always uh, the Singaporean lonely men or horny men uh, in Singapore. So, so they are easily succumb to these kind of things, you know. I, I'm, I pre probably because we are always busy and we don't really have time for, I don't know, to get a proper really intimate relationship or we do have like a low self-esteem to actually ask a girl out. So, you know, so these are the kind of things or reasons uh, why they actually prefer a straightforward, let's do it now. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so this is one of the case. Uh, I got on a Facebook and a girl got, uh, and a girl got on named Vanessa. I you know she wants to video call her on Skype. She was fully naked across the bed and she was like sending messages, you know, trying to get into the mood. And so he gave in and he showed himself and then he, she actually uh, uh, threaten him to say uh, to send them uh, uh, to, 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 to his school friends and families and eventually she asked to pay 1,000 euros so yeah so it's all, this is very scary because it happens a lot in Singapore and we actually have a documentary uh, a 30 minutes documentary in Singapore about simply scams and this is just one of the topics that were actually being uh, shown so um, for our findings is, you know, Facebook is still the medium that they are used to actually start the initia initiation. Um, the country origin of scam are Philippines, uh, and the mode of transfer is still Western Union. You know, um, I'm not so sure why, because I think Philippines should should have their uh, digital payment advance a, a bit developed. But again, most of the most of our findings uh, is that they they actually were forced to pay via Western Union. Uh, and yeah, the total money made is about USD $42,000 so far for, for but this is last year. So I don't have the statistics for this year. All right. Okay, I, I think of all the scams that I'm gonna talk about, this is gonna be the most interesting thing because it actually combines uh, half of phishing and human interaction via, uh, digital, uh, uh, via digital and online. So. Carousel is basically an application where, where you can actually buy stuff. Uh, it's like Amazon, it's like eBay, it's just that this is a Singaporean main application and it doesn't have a digital payment, things like, like PayPal and stuff like that. You, you, have to, you have to pay like you meet the person, uh, you pay or you have to provide a bank uh, account number and you actually transfer the money via bank accounts. So how the scam work is, they will ask for your number and the conversation continues. Um, I think I'm just gonna go straight to the, 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 the screenshots. So what it does is after speaking to the, to the seller, so usually buyer are always the one who gets scammed. Uh, but in this case, the targets are at the sellers instead, not the buyers. So the buyer will actually tell the seller that I'm interested in this product, all right? Can you give me a phone number and I will WhatsApp you. So they will ask, but this is pretty standard. They will ask for the seller information such as uh, bank accounts, uh, bank names, so they can actually transfer the money uh, to actually get the stuff. So they will ask for the money, uh, they will ask for the, 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 the bank account, the email address and stuff, and eventually, you know, they will start to convince that, you know, that he's serious, that he's really wanna buy, so he, you know, you get the, uh, the, 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 the attention that, that, he, that he wants to give. And he actually knows uh, that Singapore uses what kind of post, he learns. Uh, and once he got the details from the seller, he will say that claims that, uh, he will claim that payment has been sent. And he will require the seller to check his email. Now, this is how the scam, the scam works. If you look at the third big circle, claims that he accidentally overcharged. So, even, so how it works is, let's say I'm the seller 
I'm the buyer and you're the seller, uh, what I would do is I would say that, okay, uh, after getting that information, I would say that how much, how much, uh, do you, how much does this item cost? So let's say if you put it like $1,200, okay, then I would say, okay, payment has been made, but I actually accidentally pay you $1,600 instead. Now, the reason why he said that is that is because they want to actually take that $400 of your legit money to their account. So when, once he said that the payment has been sent, but he, it has been stalled because he can, you cannot receive it yet until you actually pay the $400. Now, this is, this is where the, interest, the, the interesting thing uh, comes in. So yeah, so this is what I mentioned just now. Claims that the payment cannot be canceled and needs to, the seller to check email. So this particular scammer is very persistent. He wants you to actually check your email for some reason. And the reason is this. If you look at how the email being created or being sent to you, it looks legitimate. It looks real. Um, properly formatted, and sadly, a lot of people actually fall into this. So, so when, they are, when, they, when, they are, when they were told that once you pay the $400, you will get the $1,600, right? And they actually believe it. They actually pay for it. And what I love about this is how they actually send the email into making you believe, you know, this is a phishing email basically, um, and, 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 try, and try to, you know, take, um, make you believe that the email is actually real. So if you look at the email, it's properly organized, properly formatted, and it gives you like a, you know, uh, replace a temporary host on the funds transfer, transfer, give it about 12 hours, uh, once you pay the $400, we'll pay you the $1,600. So that's how the scam works. So again, how uh, eventually how we know that this is a Nigerian scam uh, because of this. Eventually, they want you to actually pay uh, using Western Union. So once you pay it, then uh, then you you will you not hear about him anymore. So so that's how the scam works. It's pretty interesting because a lot of people actually fall for this and they keep on waiting and waiting and waiting and and. The, the person just went silent. So, yeah, so this is one of the, 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 the few uh, incidents where sellers are being targeted instead of buyers. So, yeah, platform use of Carousel, WhatsApp, uh, email to actually exchange the communication, and the total money made for them within the first quarter is about $395,000. So, ouch. Uh, this is not really in Singapore, uh, but, but I saw this uh, communication on the internet, so I thought it could be a good use case to actually share. Um, so Kik, similar like WeChat, you can actually send random uh, messages to people, right? So, so some people uh, just send you like sexy messages, you know, uh, and, and, it, and you actually believe it, and you interact with it, but you do not know who's the person behind it. So, this is how uh, he looks like. Uh, a, a, a lady called Kunkel Glitterich, you know by the name, is not really a real person, right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, they try to get you a, a conversation, and, um, and they actually learn via keywords. So if, if, you, if you look at, on the, on the right-hand side, um, right, you know what it says, right? In the green color that is covered, so they will ask for a particular pig, and and because uh, and because of the word, they actually reply back based on the keyword. And if you look, if you put in "show me," then they will say, "Okay, love to show off," and so on and so forth. Um, you know, and and the interesting part about this is that they, it it looks real because you know whenever you use key, right? They will actually, whenever you type something, they will, they actually show you like typing. So you, you think that somebody is actually typing, um, and and they can actually they can actually send you pictures. They can actually read your messages. So the the, the letter out there, every time when somebody reads the message, they actually show as red, uh, as in red, right? Um, so so this particular person or bot actually shows you that they actually read, read the the the, uh, the the message, and of course eventually. Um, 
what they want is actually this. So if, if you are weak enough to believe that, um, you know, uh, such a bot really want to talk to you and want to show you pictures or, or want to cam with you, uh, just put in your, uh, verify yourself via credit card number and that's it. They siphon off your information from there. So yeah, and, and you know, people down here, I'm pretty sure that you guys are, you would, when, when you see such a thing, you know that this is a scam, you know? But if this thing is keep on going on, it means that there's always a success rate. And that's why it continues to, 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 to develop, uh, to increase. So basically, the bots are getting smarter. Um, they actually analyze your keywords, uh, even though you know, it, it could be scripted. But actually, to understand what you type and reply based on your keywords is quite amazing, if you ask me. Um, and for those folks here, I'm pretty sure that you know, it's easy for us to spot such a scam. Uh, but those people who are desperate, uh, probably forced into entrapment, and, and if you give your credit card, that's it. And uh, yeah, just a matter of time when we have to wage against the machine. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, kidnap phone scam. Uh, how many of you have heard of this kidnap phone scam? Food? One, two, three, a few. Now, this is pretty scary. Although it's a virtual kidnap scam, it's not really a physical scam. Um, so what it does is, usually the, the, the kidnapper will actually dial, dial random numbers, and based on who the caller, uh, who the person answered, uh, if, if it's an old lady or, or an old man, you know, sound like an old lady or an old man, the chances are they could actually scam you. So they will use a sound of a crying child at the background, and, will, and, and, and they will say that, I have your child, I have your grandchild, and I want you to send me this money. If you call the police, I'm gonna threat, I'm, go I'm gonna hurt this child or even kill him. You know, and, and this happened in Singapore before. Um, and most of the victims here are actually in the 40s to 60s. Um, and, and the scary part is, people actually pay for it, and some of them um, who are smart enough to actually call them the, their child, or the, the, the uh, in one incident, they actually, one incident in Singapore, uh, the auntie would actually quickly drive to the school and check whether their, uh, his, uh, her grandchild is there. So, so um, yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty scary uh, because most of the times it was reported, okay, so it was reported in the news in Singapore that uh, most of this child-like sound sounds really like their grandson or their grand, uh, grand, grandchild. So, so that's why they actually fell for the scam. So, so if you think about it, why does it sound like uh, like their child is because imagine if you wrap your mouth with a piece of cloth and try to make a sound, the sound looks similar to every other sound, you know? mm, those kind of thing. So it's very hard to actually make out um, uh, who actually at uh, uh, screaming or trying to, you know, uh, it's just that you think that this is a sound of a child and it belongs to her, uh, him or her. So. How does virtual kidnappers know your child is away? Uh, uh, this is one of the problems that we face. We love to accept strangers on Facebook. So what strangers would do is they will actually look at your profile. They will actually learn from your profile. They see where you checked in. Um, and, and you know, because of your profile, you actually share your pictures. They know what you look like. So if a kidnapper wants to describe to, the, to, to your relative, they know how you look like based on the pictures that you posted. And before that, they will actually look for leaked information. Uh, I've seen a lot of people posting their home addresses, their credit card numbers, um, which is pretty, I'm not so sure why, but I, I think you know, people think that this is harmless, that Facebook is within their own domain and, and strangers will not do anything about it. But the problem is a lot of strangers love to actually add you for fun and learn from you. Uh, some even catfish their way in. So, if you look at other if they look at your friends list or, or suggested friends, what they do is uh, they will look at that profile, and if the profile is public, they will actually take all the pictures, create, recreate the profile, and add you as a friend. And without realizing or not, you think or you think that this is actually a friend that is trying to add you, but it's not. It's just a stranger trying to trying to learn as much as they can from you. So it's pretty scary how how this. Uh, scammers or virtual kidnappers uh, uh, try to learn more from you. 
So, so these are some of the uh, cases that I've seen. Uh, the first one is in Singapore. Uh, I think the second and the third one is actually in America. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's real, it's happening. So please be careful uh, because even law enforcers or the police, they, they, it's very hard to actually categorize virtual kidnapping as a real or unreal case because it could be real. That's the thing. You know, it's very hard to actually make out. So it's, it's very tough for the law enforcement to actually decide whether this is real or this is not. So try to be careful. Um, so yeah, um, for the country of origin, the reason why I, I put it possibly China is because in Singapore, most of the, person, most of the victims are actually Chinese. Uh, one of the uh, Malay or Indians who actually received such a call, um, when they actually spoke in, in, uh, in their own native language, for example, me, I spoke in Malay language, um, and they couldn't understand, so they quickly uh, like you know put down the, uh, the, the the call. Uh, but from the call, from the person that listened to the call, they did hear a crying uh, a, a child a crying sound of a child, you know. So they know that this is a scam. Yeah, but because of the language barrier, uh, they couldn't uh, the, the 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 kidnapper couldn't understand. Uh, they quickly put down the phone. So yeah, so that's the reason why I would say it's possibly from China because of the language. Um, impersonation, impersonation scam, uh, this is interesting. I have a video for this. Uh, so basically they will use authoritative, authority, authoritative figures um, and actually put you in a situation that you are actually a criminal or, um, or someone that, that involves in a criminal activity. And basically they just want you to pay fines and, and, um, and some techniques involve even downloading apps. So this happened in Singapore. So I have a video here. Let me see if I can Let's play. Okay. Okay, hang on, let me see. Because in the past three months, the Singapore police has reported that over four million dollars worth of money has been collected. And we've been wanting to do a video about this for a long time because it is an urgent problem. Just so happens that last Thursday, we actually got a call from one of these scammers. Now it's in Chinese, but Terence here speaks Chinese. Not the best Chinese, but some Chinese. So he's going to walk through what they actually said. I think there are very few operations in Singapore that speak only Chinese. Why would anybody be calling me, of all people, in Chinese? Uh? It's, you're setting it up for like a huge loss in translation moment. It doesn't help that he's a cynical asshole. Uh. But the thing is, you hear DHL, it sounds kind of legit, and they actually mask their actual number, and they actually put, use a number that is a plus six five in front of it to make you think it's a local number. I don't know if you heard the words phone call and package sense because I don't know how to say them in Chinese. Yeah, take, take whatever translations come with a pinch of salt. Uh, because like, like we said, his Chinese sucks. If you've got any corrections, just leave a comment below. So, so immediately, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm totally DHL because I'm asking for your parcel number, you know. I'm not asking for your credit card number yet. I'm, I'm totally legit. This is the point in my head where I was thinking, should I provide him my real name? Dao Song. Chen Dao Song. <laughs> so that's a completely fake name. Uh, you sound like a Chinese table tennis player. Chen Tao Song. You look like a Chen Tao Song. The fake name is so fake that even I don't know what words there are in it. You can tell by Terence's expression uh, when he gave the, the name. Uh. You know what would be funny if I said like Rajamutu, son of Chigren? But I still speak Chinese. I wonder what they come back with after that. Chen Tao Song is Chen Tao Song. 
Wait, he's accusing, he's saying you have sent bank cards through the mail. He's saying that my name, my oh, name was on the package, parcel, yeah, right? oh, tied okay, to this yeah. parcel. He's mentioned, you know, Shanghai Customs and DHL parcel. And so these are all big entities and oh, this is the part where I guess I'm supposed to feel scared. Ah, uh, that's not right. Someone is now using my name, Chen Dao Song, to commit this, you know, act of international financial conspiracy. Brilliant. Suddenly I go from there's some dude in Singapore the uh, uh, Interpol is the under Interpol is criminal. <laughs> 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 Oh. Okay, so so uh, this it's longer actually. Uh, it's on YouTube. You just type in DHS scam in Singapore and you actually see the whole story. But that's the main thing. So the idea behind that video is to show that um, uh, they actually use you know like authorita authoritative figures uh, and, and call calling from legit companies. And you you see the num the number that they mask is actually from a Singapore number, despite the original caller is actually from a different country. Um, so it's very interesting how they actually do it. Uh, and this this in, uh, this scamming industry in this, for example, DHL is pretty huge because what they do is uh, they have an operations by itself. So when you call up, they will have operators uh, to actually, you know, uh, to have a, they, they have a customer service hotline basically to actually tell you that this is what you have done, this is what you need to do, and they will make you believe that you have did something wrong. Uh, and, and a lot of people fall for it, uh, and, and sadly, they actually uh, uh, pay for some such a thing, and most of them, of course, are, are Chinese. Sadly, uh, so yeah, total money made four million dollars within the first quarter of, uh, of of this year. So yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, uh, at the end of the year how much money they actually made from scamming. So um, see, two more minutes, good. Uh, preventing ourselves, um, I would if, if you look at the talk, um, if you look at the findings analysis, one of the most common thing that we I actually notice is that. They are using platforms such as Facebook uh, to begin the initiation, right? So, so try not to like you know share your details uh, to strangers. Um, we need to try to practice compartmentalization of information. I believe Facebook uh, has these settings where you can actually put friends in groups and show them what you want to show. Uh, so make use of that setting so that you know uh, you don't you don't you only show to a group of people that you know what they are supposed to see, rather than everybody gets to see everything. So yeah, I'm pretty paranoid when it comes to this, so I have a lot of people in my restricted list, so they can only see my header and, and my public posts. Uh, the rest are all being compartmentalized, so my friends, my family can see different things. Um, again, um, education and awareness, this very hard to, you know, you can't have a social engineering toolkit to actually help you learn about this. Um, you need to be educated and you need to be aware. So it's good to actually learn from people's experiences. You may not be a victim of this scam, but perhaps some other might, uh, or you, you probably have to talk to them and say, you know, uh, learn from them basically. Uh, yep, learn not to be easily met by smooth seduction. Um, perspective, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, the last part is pretty straightforward. <laughs> So yeah, uh, future of cyber scams. Um, it's it's no longer human to human. You know, social engineering. We usually 
practice our 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 techniques against another human but now because of the use of because of the, the the increased use of technology computers laptops you know cyber stuff uh, we actually use uh, uh, this platform to actually conduct our social engineering uh, uh, techniques you know to attack another person or to target another person using social engineering via uh, cyber or technology yeah so yeah human learning getting smarter and smarter if you can see from the kick um, and yeah uh, now they are trying to go towards mobile so for example the DHL scam one of the victim in Singapore actually was asked to download a mobile app a mobile app so what it does is once you download this mobile app from Android Android uh, what it does is uh, you need to key in your credentials so the moment you download you key in the credentials they actually steal everything from you so yeah that's the mobile app scam so yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know.